Hi, uh, welcome to a video podcast on how interference patterns form. What you're looking at here is what's called the virtual ripple tank and what we've got here is two sources of waves over on the left hand side of the screen. Uh, we would see exactly the same pattern if these were two um, single slits, two slits, um, two coherent slits which would act as two sources of waves. And you can see some sort of pattern has formed here. I'll just briefly go on the 3D view and that give you a bit more of an idea of what you're seeing. So we've got our two sources here and you can see there are areas of strong wave activity and then there are areas where really the wave seems to have completely disappeared. And what I'm just going to talk through is how does this um, pattern form and the language you'd need to use to describe it. If this was um, two thin slits that we'd shine light from a laser through and then we put a screen along here what would we see here we'd see a bright spot then dark and then bright and we would call those interference fringes or Young's fringes so the easiest place to start is if we um, just draw a line along here we can see we've got a line of strong wave activity so why is that well, along that anywhere along that line is receiving its waves from two sources. It's receiving a wave from here and a wave from here. And because both those lines are equal in length, every point on the pink line is e equidistant from the two sources, the two waves are arriving in phase. A peak from this source arrives at the same time as a peak from this source and we get constructive interference. If we look along this line here we can see we've got an area where really there's no wave activity at all and again if we draw in the paths that the two waves have followed we can see quite clearly this time they're not equal in length. These waves here have travelled further than those waves here. And what's happened is these waves here have travelled half a wavelength further than these waves here. And we call that a path difference of half a wavelength. When two waves have travelled half a wavelength path difference, they arrive out of phase. A peak from this wave meets a trough from this source. And that leads to destructive interference and that's why there's no wave activity along that line. The path difference is half a wavelength all the way along that line. If we now look at along this line here, I'll just quickly grab the pink and colour it in again. Again we've got strong wave activity. However in this case it can't be the case that's because they've both travelled exactly the same distance. So what's happened here is now the path difference, the extra distance travelled by the waves from this source, is a whole wavelength. That means again a peak is arriving um, at the same time as a peak from the other source and a trough is arriving at the same time as a trough. Uh, the waves are in phase and we get constructive interference. I'll just take those two paths off again. Again if we put the purple on, along here the path difference must be one and a half wavelengths and that's given rise to destructive interference again. Here the path difference is half a wavelength. Here the path difference is one and a half wavelengths. Again the waves will be out of phase and we will get destructive interference. Along here the path difference is one wavelength and if we put the sources closer together um, now if we put the sources further apart we would get a, 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 a pattern of more light and dark and as we work our out, way out the path difference for the bright spots would be uh, zero, one wavelength, two wavelengths, three wavelengths. Uh, we'll look at the maths of this uh, in terms of measuring wavelength with an, an interference pattern in another video podcast. Thank you.